Today I'm going to share some information about what your role might be in the College of Education's Continuous Improvement or Baldridge review process, some information about the Baldridge model including some key terms, and share some information about the College of Education's report that was submitted this year. Before I get to all of that, you might be wondering, what is this Baldridge stuff? Well, first this is about systematically getting better. Baldridge is designed to help organizations get better at getting better. They also have an annual celebration award event to recognize participants and encourage continued involvement. It's important to know that this is confidential. Our results won't be published or shared publicly. And I want to point out that this is not accreditation. We won't be punished for not meeting a set standard, although we do want to do our best. The basic steps in the Baldridge process are to write an application, also called a self-study. Submit this to examiners who perform a site visit. Then we receive written feedback and use that feedback to implement improvements. If you've been invited to participate in an online meeting with the Baldridge examiners, first, I hope you will attend if possible. If the selected time doesn't work for you, please let me know so we can get a sense of who will be in the meeting. The examiners have a limited amount of time for meetings, so we unfortunately will not be able to have much flexibility in scheduling meetings. I'd also ask you to try to spend a few minutes getting familiar with the terminology in the presentation uh, today and in other materials available. Understanding the terminology will help you respond to questions from the examiners and know what is going on with the, the review, review process. And third, I'll ask you to think a little bit about how your role in the college fits with the college's mission and vision and how that role connects with the operations of the college. So you're thinking about how your role connects and interacts with this and how you can contribute to the conversation about how we get better. And if you haven't been invited, don't feel bad. It's nothing personal. The examiners have limited time and can't meet with everybody. But hopefully you'll still watch this video so you can learn more about Baldridge and help the college keep moving forward on our improvement journey. I'm going to talk now about some of the important terminology used in the Baldridge process so you get a sense of what these words mean. First is examiners. Examiners are trained volunteers from other organizations such as healthcare organizations, businesses, K-12 schools. They help us improve by reading our written self-study, talking with people from the college, and providing us feedback. So what is it they actually want to see? They're trained to look for four things in each of our processes in the college. So they want to see that in each thing that the college does, that we have an approach, which is a way of doing things, that it's deployed across the college, that we're learning about our approach with the goal of improving it, and that this is all integrated together with what we say is most important to us. So more specifically, an approach is just the method we use to carry out our processes. And processes are just a, a group of linked activities that have a shared purpose for producing a program or service for students or other customers. So for example, we have an approach for hiring and onboarding a new staff member. It follows a series of steps from creating a job description to recruiting, interviewing, onboarding, and so on. So that's our college's approach in this area. Uh, deployment then is about to determine if the approach is actually used across the college. It's the extent to which the approach is used. So for example, if a school district if only two of the district's nine buildings used the, the teacher onboarding activities, then it would not be considered fully deployed because it's not used across all nine of the buildings. So deployment is about the extent or the, the breadth to which an approach is used. Learning is about how the college studies itself. It's about how we learn about what we're doing to improve and how we use that for innovation and for continuous improvement activities. So one example to think about is uh, Netflix. So I've been a DVD by mail subscriber for a long time. We actually still get them uh, now, even in 2020. <laughs> uh, and it's amazing to me how rarely I get a DVD in the mail that has been damaged by, by the mail delivery process. But of course, this didn't happen by accident. Netflix went through many iterations of their mailing envelopes, shown on the right here, that were changed to decrease the number of discs stamped in the mail, to speed up the delivery process, and increase efficiency. So to improve, it didn't happen by accident. Netflix engaged in learning where they examined the issue, tried different solutions, and then stuck with a strategy that helped them improve in the area they wanted the most. So learning is about that process you use to figure out how you can be better, what, what, what ways in which you are not meeting your expectations, uh, and taking steps to use that information to improve in the long term. So that's what they're looking for for learning. Integration is the fourth thing examiners are wanting to see. And it's about alignment between what the college is doing, its plans, its decisions, its workforce, all around what we seek to achieve. So it's all about how we support these, these college-wide goals. So for example, if you're a football fan, you might have a team who has the goal of making the Super Bowl. Here's a picture of the Vikings who are pretty much out of the running for the Super Bowl already this year. 
Um, but what makes something integrated is when all the pieces come together. So in an integrated approach, the team manager selects players for in the draft who fit the coach's strategy and who are trained to play the game according to the team's philosophy. So all these different parts of the, the operation work together to achieve a single goal or a single uh, approach or a single, a single thing that they're trying to achieve together. So to summarize, the examiners are looking for four things. They're looking for, in each of the operations, they're looking for an approach that we have a way of doing things that is deployed across the college, that we're learning about how it's going and how to improve it, and that these things are aligned and connected to, what, to what's the mo most important to us. And then the other thing they're looking for, and this is in results, they'll be looking for uh, results that show that we're achieving these things. So they'll be looking to see if we have good levels of performance based on our goals, if we have positive trends of results over time, if our results are improving, how we compare ourselves to others, and if our results are integrated or connected or aligned to the things that we say are important to us. Now that I've given you a little background in the terminology, I'm going to spend just two minutes on providing an overview of what the Baldrige Excellence Framework looks like. This is a visual diagram which, with an overview of the Baldrige Performance Model. On the inside of the circle, the big circle there, you can see there's six hexagons and a rectangle, and these represent the seven Baldrige criteria. So leadership, which is about how the college is led. Strategy, which is about how we develop and implement strategy to achieve our mission. Customers, which is about how we listen to students and other customers to give them what they need. Workforce, which is about the faculty and staff and suppliers we use to implement our operations. Operations, which is our daily and monthly activities. Results, which indicate how well we're performing. Measurement analysis and knowledge management, which is about how we collect, analyze, and use data for learning. So those are the seven criteria or the seven key areas in the Baldrige model. So what does this actually look like in practice? Let me give you an example. So let me start by asking a question that I've wondered about for a number of years as a car owner. Why are some cars more reliable than others? I've had some cars that were extremely reliable, hardly ever needing care, but others were needing repairs almost every couple of weeks sometimes even major things every couple of weeks. And as I've thought about this, I've come to realize that reliability isn't an accident, but rather it's a choice that a company makes at the expense of pursuing other things. So in terms of these seven Baldrige criteria, here's what it looks like. So it starts by listening to customers and determining that, that, that they, they want reliable cars. So then the leadership then makes a choice to focus on reliability as their vision. To achieve this vision, they create a strategy to pursue the creation of highly reliable cars. And then they implement this vision by hiring, training, incentivizing employees to achieve that vision. They design car assembly processes to achieve the vision. They measure their progress, use it to inform their strategy. And they carefully track their results and engage in continuous improvement to ensure they're on track for achieving this, this vision. So one thing I'll point out in this example here, you can see how it's achieved integration from the customers, the workforce, the strategy, the results, all are aligned with this vision for the company. So now that you have an overview of what Baldrige looks like, what the Baldrige model looks like in some terminology, we'll take a quick look at the College of Education's 2020 Baldrige application. To respect your time, I'll just provide a quick kind of high level overview but if you want to see the full application please email me i'll send you the whole thing and you can dig in as deep as you want to go so this is a visual overview of the college that covers the major aspects of our application provides a, a good high level overview of what the college does who we serve how we go about our work i'm going to highlight a few things in here in more depth so at the very top you see our mission which is to deliver a personal, affordable, and top-ranked education for students who want to collaborate with renowned faculty to solve problems and affect change in the field of education and in our community, our country, and around the world. Our vision is a world-class college, college of education, leading research, engaging communities, preparing education and mental health professionals for innovation and impact. And our values, which are collaboration and engagement, commitment to community, continuous improvement, diversity and inclusion, equity, excellence, innovation, and integrity. Okay, our primary customers, this is the, the people that we serve with our programs and educational services and, and so forth, include students, traditional K-12 reach students, employers of alumni, parents of students, in-service professionals, educational professionals, faculty, staff, and the general public. 
Our key processes, these are the things we do to achieve our mission. These are grouped into three areas of teaching, research, and community engagement. So in teaching, this is things like developing programs, instruction, grading, granting degrees. In research, this is things like identifying opportunities, writing grants, communicating results. In community engagement, this includes building partnerships, uh, participating in service engagement activities. And finally, our four strategic objectives are one, to improve student success, two, to advance research and discovery, three, increase community and stakeholder engagement, and four, actively engage diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism. So that's a quick overview of the college and what we put in our application, what we seek to achieve, who we serve, what we do, and our strategy for how we'll get there. In terms of results, this is a sample of what our, just one of our uh, results slides. As you can see, when possible, we include changes in performance over time, a goal or a comparative data, and an indicator of whether or not we're improving. So you can see the, in this example, the orange bar is either a comparison or a goal. The blue bar shows the college's performance over time, and the little green arrow shows you that up, in this case, is better rather than uh, down. So in closing, the key takeaways, this work is all about getting better at getting better. If you're invited to a meeting with the examiner team, please try to attend and simply be honest and help us find ways we can improve. And if you want to learn more, please email me. I can send you the full report or set aside some time for a meeting. Thank you, especially for all of the work you do to support and improve the College of Education.